I'm I'm a huge bull on gold and silver, both here and longer term. Um, I believe gold can get to three thousand. This has been a long held forecast for me in the last certainly the last year or two. I think gold can get to three thousand pre bust. I think silver can get to sixty pre bust, uh, which means this year probably. I'm I'm forecasting the Fed's balance sheet will grow to thirty trillion because of that kind of money. We're going to have a commodity cycle unlike any in history. So I'm predicting $500 oil. I'm predicting $20,000 gold. I'm predicting $500 silver. David Hunter, a contrarian macro strategist with 49 years of experience in the financial markets, has what many will consider shocking and even insane predictions for the equities and commodities markets and overall global economy, both in the short and long term. According to the renowned investor and analyst, we are currently in the beginning stages of a short-term melt-up that he believes would take the S&P 500 to six or 7,000, gold to $3,000, and silver to $60. Hunter believes this melt-up will be caused by FOMO as investors rush into the markets, especially when the Federal Reserve finally signals interest rate cuts. The pressure of money managers and all other categories of investors trying to get back into the markets will put so much pressure on the markets that prices will skyrocket, moving the S&P from its current 4,398 points to 6 or 7,000. Hunter believes some of those massive gains will spill into precious metals, taking gold to a new, all-time high of $3,000 and silver to $60 per ounce. But like all good things, the melt-up will not last long, the macro strategist adds. As the melt-up reaches more advanced stages in the coming months, Hunter says there will be more signs of the global economy, starting from the banking sector, buckling under the pressure of all the unchecked leverage. The result of this, Hunter adds, will be a global deflationary bust that would be accompanied by a financial crisis of historical proportions. Hunter says the bust will have the same timeline as a recession, but will resemble more of a depression in intensity and he is predicting that it could happen within the next 15 months. Hunter also compares the bust to the global financial crisis of 08-09. The macro strategist believes that's when the bust should have happened, but central banks came to the rescue by pumping trillions of dollars into the system. We've been able to kick the can so far down the road, but given the current inflationary environment, there's no evidence to suggest that central banks will be willing to again come to the rescue, at least not until there are serious signs of damage. When the bust hits, Hunter predicts that there would be global multi-billion dollar bank collapses and the stock market will crash by 80% and not reach previous highs again for another two decades. But the story will be different for commodities, which Hunter believes will have a super cycle of epic proportions. Hunter gives a detailed analysis of his predictions in a recent discussion with Jay Martin of The Jay Martin Show. Please watch, share, and like this video as we bring you clips from the interview. Also, ensure you subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our future uploads. Thanks, and enjoy the video. Uh, I define a bust as um, more severe than a recession, but at the speed of recession. So it's, it's basically, it'll feel like a depression, but it'll happen in the context of maybe a year, you know, 12, 15 months. You know, not, not like the Great Depression that runs for a decade. So... Um, so it's something, you know, and I think it's accompanied by a financial crisis uh, of historical proportions. So my, my whole reason for calling for a bust rather than a recession, a uh, normal recession, is the leverage in the system. We've got, you know, $300 trillion in global debt, uh, and that's up from $250 trillion just a couple of years ago. So it's, it's moving up very rapidly. Um, and quadrillions in notional value derivatives, which is leverage on markets. So we have we are at a place where we've never been before. Leverage is something that works great on the way up, helps enhance returns on the way up. Um, it decimates you on the way down. So a normal downturn, when coupled with this kind of leverage, um, turns into something bigger. Uh, and I think bust basically something we almost saw in 2008-9, but they pulled us back from the cliff just in time. This time, I don't think they are going to be able to pull us back from the cliff before it happens. So, um, so I think bust means major bank failures around the world, less so here because of the medicine we took in 2008-9. You know, our banks are less leveraged than by far than they were then. Europe's very vulnerable. 
you guys up in Canada are very vulnerable. The banking, the banks up there were very clean going into 2008. They have, they didn't learn our lesson. They have, they are now us. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, and Australia is very leveraged their real estate, and, and I think they are in trouble. So, and of course, Asia is a wild card. You know, China is a wild card. So, so I think um, you just have far beyond any leverage we've ever seen before. 2008-9, I mean, it was just the last cycle. We're way beyond that degree of leverage. So it's been, you know, it's been a dozen years here of just levering up like crazy. Um, so that's where the bus comes from. Um, it's helped along by what I think is a very big policy error, what I call potentially the biggest policy error in history. I think the Fed is making an egregious mistake. I think they've overstayed the tight tightening uh, already by a lot. And they're, you know, talking about tightening further. Um, they are guilty of wanting to see the results before they change their policy, right? You know, they want to see 2% inflation before they change or something close to that. This stuff, the way and I've tracked, you know, I came into this business 73, so I've tracked six cycles. What I've seen in every cycle is stuff happens gradually until it doesn't. And then all of a sudden it the crack cap is very fast. I mean, we saw a little sliver of it with um, Silicon Valley Bank and, and the events around the regional banks, yeah. how fast things can change. You know, it was basically a weekend. Um, and that's what I think we're going to see on a much larger scale globally at some point. And I don't know whether it happens this fall, this winter, um, early next year, but it's in that window. I think it's sometime between... Uh, beginning of fourth quarter and end of first quarter. That's kind of when I think the bus really gets going. And um, so that's, you know, and then as I've said, the melt up when we're at six or 7,000, I'm going to be turning, I'm going to be the you know, extreme contrary. And I was in the other direction saying, you know, this thing is, is a house of cards get out. And I guarantee you, most most investors are going to be all in telling you why this thing has legs, you know, why it's the beginning of a cycle. It just started. Yeah. You know? it's, so so this isn't the normal cycle. I mean, this is what I keep saying. Is this is the end of a 41-year secular bull market that started in August of 1982. That's when disinflation began. It's going to culminate in this blow-off top. And then, you know, the biggest... Um, bear market and, and downturn we've had since the Great Depression. For David Hunter, who currently serves as the chief macro strategist at Contrarian Macro Advisors, precious metals investors can look forward to two massive rallies within the next seven years. The first, a smaller one, Hunter believes could begin any time between the end of the year and early 2024. But the epic rally of historic proportions that Hunter is really looking forward to is the one he believes will occur between 2025 and 2030. According to the macro strategist, this super cycle will be prompted by central banks printing even more money than they did during the 0809 global financial crisis. Hunter predicts that the Fed's balance sheet, for example, could grow to as much as $30 trillion by the end of 2025. Here's how he believes that would begin a commodity cycle of never before seen proportions. I'm I'm a huge bull on gold and silver, both here and longer term. Um, I believe gold can get to three thousand. This has been a long held forecast for me in the last certainly the last year or two. I think gold can get to three thousand pre bust. I think silver can get to sixty pre bust, uh, which means this year probably. Um, and and then I think they get hit pretty hard in the bust, along with most assets. Um, and, and certainly commodities. Um, and then post-bust, I think by the end of the decade, because of the amount of money that's going to have to be pumped in to save the system globally, I'm, I'm forecasting the Fed's balance sheet will grow to $30 trillion in the bust, so in the next two years, um, because, and proportionally similar around the world in every central bank uh, because the system's basically imploding. Um, because of that kind of money, we're going to have a commodity cycle unlike any in history. So 
I'm predicting $500 oil. I'm predicting $20,000 gold. I'm predicting $500 silver uh, by the end of the decade. So, you know, there's a there's a nice run this year, but the true run is post-bust, which is basically 2025 to 2030. Copper and the base metals will all run um, and, and be far beyond any levels we've ever seen before. Um, you know, many fold from current levels. I think ag com- commodities will play um, big time. Um, I I think you know natural gas obviously will run with with oil. Um, I I just we are. I talk about an eighty percent bear market in equities, and then I I also say that we will not see the highs reached in this final blow off again for decades. So this is an all time peak in equities for at least the next two decades. Um, and people get very discouraged because I'm also calling for a collapse in the 2030s, uh, uh, you know, global collapse um, economically, financially, basically the end of a 90-year Ponzi scheme. <laughs> um, so people get very concerned about what do I do, you know? And I go, you have one last huge opportunity, you know, 20, 2025 to 2030 in commodities. It will be a cycle every bit as exciting as the, you know, the last 40 years in equities, um, except it'll happen in a very short time. It'll be through the roof. After an 80% bear market decline in the stock market, Hunter is predicting that equities will only continue to consolidate for years without making any new highs. For the macro strategist, the wise and safe play for investors is commodities, which he believes will have what will be similar to the equities bull cycle of the past 40 years. He is also predicting the eventual collapse of the fiat Ponzi in the 2030s, another event that would make a strong bull case for hard assets and real stores of value like gold and silver. What are your thoughts on David Hunter's predictions for gold, silver, and other precious metals? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.